So folks, farm lockdown zone, clearing guide, all you need to know, gear, loot, roots, all kind of stuff. This time I want to drill a bit deeper, so instead of just talking about the actual gameplay and what you have on screen, I want to discuss this map in more detail, which means that this video might be longer than the usual ones, but I don't mind. I want to give you details, I want to share context, and maybe we can convert this into a nice conversation in the comment section. First off, I think Farm Lockdown Zone is the ideal map to farm, to farm stuff, to farm loot and to farm actually ranked points. And let me tell you why. Looking at the maps individually, so armory is tough. Even if you have solid gear, even if you have med kits and bullets and all kind of stuff, it doesn't guarantee that you are going to stay alive. There is good loot. If you team up and uh, play as a squad, you need to split the loot, which is also still okay. But armory isn't that big and it's full of threats. Northridge has pretty decent loot, but it's a huge map. So you have to run a lot. You have to be aware of snipers. So no, Northridge is not really ideal for farming. This leaves us with valley and farm. And I feel that valley is still pretty much okay but there are so many open spaces you can never actually predict if the enemy is gonna come from the right hand side from from behind you or whatever so you need to constantly monitor your 360 your surroundings which is different on farm because on a farm it's easier to predict where the enemies are coming from and where they're heading towards so farm lockdown zone, let's divide it into two major parts. We have the left side where we have the trade center as one of the main areas. And on the right hand side, we have a bunch of locations, but I'm going to highlight the villa because I think that's one of the primary objectives you want to do. And it's part of my route. So I'm going to get back to that. I personally like to avoid the top part of the map, especially if I'm spawning on the right hand side. I don't like to be in the storage or loading area or stables even. So I'm trying to play more on the bottom part of the map. If I spawn on the left hand side, then there are two choices. You can decide to go into the trade center and then from the trade center, you have actually two options. You can go to stables or try to go into the motel. My default route is going into the trade center and opening the safe, which brings me to the keys. So I usually play with three keys on the farm map, the one for the trade center, the one for motel room 201 and then the villa key. If you have the main guest room from the hotel, you are lucky, but that key is worth a fortune. It's like 1 million coin. I never found it and I never purchased it. Obviously, if you have that, even better. After clearing the trade center, if I do it, because if I feel it's super dangerous, I just skip it. It's not worth sacrificing yourself for that one single save. So if there is a lot of action going on in the trade center, then I run straight to the motel. And just a side note here, I understand and why we have the dangerous areas split like we have them now so motel and stables to have them both in the center uh, which makes sense but i feel that the trade center is one of the most dangerous places on the map maybe in the future the devs could eventually rethink this map and on top of the motel have the trade center and the villa as dangerous zones and then instead of two we would have three the reason why I'm saying that is because I truly think there is no reason to go to stables. I mean, there's a free safe, yes. There's the warehouse uh, above or next to the stables, but that key, I never purchased that. I think it's just not worth purchasing it. So it's unnecessary risk going to stables. Circling back, so if I'm done with the trade center or if I decide to skip it, I go to the motel, which is kind of the primary focus of the farm lockdown, obviously, because we have the free safe, we have the room 201, and on top, that's the area where most likely you're gonna face most of enemy players, and then you kill them, and then you take their loot. Easy, right? The thinking is that after you are done with the motel, you're just gonna easily extract at extraction point number two, where you got to pay 6,000 coin and you're out. It's an easy and secure way to get out of the map. And yes, I died once at 1.3 seconds, which I will never forget. But still, I feel that's the extraction point you want to target. Because by the time you clear the trade center and the motel, your bag should be already full of stuff. And it just doesn't make sense to run towards the other side of the map. Now let's have a look at 
the same from the other side so the goal is to get into the villa first and then from there we run towards the motel and just quickly check that house near the fields where you have two floors and on the upper floor you have that uh, suitcase with the drawers i don't know the name but anyways that small house that's worth looting because sometimes there is good stuff and then we continue to the motel i didn't say it when i talked about the other spawn but if i come from the left hand side i usually go from the back of the motel and then maybe through the basement or up the stairs to the upper floor we're gonna do the same if you come from the right hand side so if you clear the villa and again let me remind you about the villa key it's worth buying that you may find some good stuff there and then once you get into the motel you would want to approach that from from the back where you have that warehouse and then eventually run up on the stairs but try to avoid going into the motel from the uh, main entrance because there are so many places where you can be shot from if you decide to go from the main entrance and once you are done with villa small house motel again your bag should be full of stuff and then you should be extracting in the motel the main areas you want to check it's a safe obviously the free safe in the corridor and then the room 201 the room next to it which has the balcony and then the rooms underneath that because there's a drawer there's a computer there's a jacket there's always something you can loot there usually i don't spend time looting the basement and the kitchen area if you have time obviously go for it but it always depends if you already have enough stuff at that point then just you know decide to extract and then you can head into the next one it's better to extract with 150k instead of losing everything there are some key moments regardless of where you spawn you gotta be cautious especially at the very beginning of the game because there are multiple players teams spawning near to you so make sure that you are understanding your surroundings before heading to your first target. Generally speaking, crossing the big road in the middle, that's very dangerous. Regardless whether you're running from the trade center or from the villa to the motel, always keep your eye on that road and check what's on the other side, okay? Because if you're on this side of the road, it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't see you and you can become a really easy target. They just sneak behind you and when you slow down near to the hotel, they're gonna attack you from behind. So always check if there are enemies on the other side of the road, even if you are not planning to attack them. And this brings me to the next discussion point, which is you don't have to do all the fights, okay? You can avoid them if you want. So what I said regarding the trade center, if things are getting hard over there, then just skip that, okay? If you are seeing a bunch of shooting near the uh, wealth field or loading area, then try to play it slow. You don't need to get involved, except if you are farming rank points. In that case, obviously, try to keep yourself near the danger, near the danger zones and the fights. But the point I want to make regarding fights is that you're going to face the farm boss in most cases, in many cases and you don't need to fight them because he's having very tough guards and you're just gonna spend your ammunition you're just gonna spend your med kits you are putting yourself into unnecessary danger if you keep them alive uh, they can actually help you revealing other players so if you hear that they are getting into a fight then you know obviously another player is around and another team is around which is going to give you an advantage you're going to know where they are and again you can decide whether you want to fight them or just avoid them the minimum requirements on this map is 30k but i wouldn't go that down i think you at least need a t4 armor an mp5 with dum dums but that's the bare minimum I would more recommend to go with eventually T4, T5 armor, maybe an F2000, maybe a slightly boosted AKM or something, and then yellow bullets. So that's where I feel more safe and secure. Maybe MPX, that's perfectly fine with dum dums or with yellows. And then like a mid-sized rig, maybe the wrap simple and the mid-sized bag. So I'm not risking more than 80K or 100K plus the, the bullets so I think the average for me is between 80k and 150k at max this year should be perfectly enough to fight this map and to bring out 
about 200k, 300k, 500k or whatever k. And don't get me wrong, I don't want you to have the assumption that I'm extracting in every single game or that I'm winning every single gunfight. No, that's not true. That's not true at all and I'm not shy to share the bad moments. But if you extract with 500,000 coins and then in the next one you die and then eventually die again and you lose like two times 150,000, then you are still on the positive side of things. My extraction rate would be more high if I would just play simple farm. I don't really care about the extraction percentage and you shouldn't either. Just always think that if you learn something from the previous game uh, that makes you a better player, then it's a win regardless of whether you extract successfully or you die in that game. If you become a better player, then it was worth that game. And we always learn something or at least that should be the aim. And hopefully with this video guys you learned something, I could share something which you didn't already know or made you want to think to do something differently. If I achieve that I'm super happy, throw this video a like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always guys, happy gaming, see you in the next one, bye!